Good morning. We continue our series of um, Everybody Tell Somebody, and today our focus is meet people where they are. And our scripture, we turn to Acts, the 17th chapter, uh, verses 16 through 28. And uh, I'm reading from the Common English Bible. While Paul waited for them in Athens, he was deeply distressed to find that the city was flooded with idols. He began to interact with the Jews and Gentile God worshipers in the synagogue. He also addressed whoever happened to be in the marketplace each day. Certain Ecupian and Stoic philosophers engaged in discussion too. Some said, what an amateur. What's he trying to say? Others remarked he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods. They said this because he was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. They took him into custody and brought him to the council on Mars Hills. What is this new teaching? Can we learn what you're talking about? You've told us some strange things and we want to know what they mean. They said this because all Athenians, as well as the foreigners who live in Athens, used to spend their time doing nothing but talking about or listening to the newest thing. Paul stood in the middle of the council on Mars Hill and said, People of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every way. As I was walking through town and carefully observing your objects of worship, I even found an altar with the, this inscription to an unknown God. What you worship is unknown, I now proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it is Lord of heaven and earth. He doesn't live in temples made with human hands, nor is God served by human hands, as though he needed something, since he is the one who gives life, breath, and everything else. From one person, God created every human nation to live on the whole earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their lands. God made the nations so that they could seek him, they would seek him, perhaps even reach out to him and find him. In fact, God isn't far from any of us. As I was reading through this, there's an image that comes to my mind that I wanted to share with you to kind of put this in in um, a modern day context that may help you relate to what's going on here. I don't know if any of you watched the Big Bang Theory, Big Bang uh, comedy. Uh, it's a show, it's in reruns now, but a group of, uh, some would call them intellectuals, others would call them nerds, but a, a group of uh, men, uh, four men, who at times get into these crazy debates, mostly about superheroes, of who's the greatest superhero, or if this superhero had this power, what that would that mean for the others? Um, they also get into these debates about Star Trek and Star Wars, um, and, and the different uh, movie versions of that. But <clears throat> they get into these what to an outsider is a meaningless debate. And that's the image that comes to my mind when I look at or think about what Paul is encountering here. The other thing that uh, needs to be pointed out is that uh, Paul is seems to be apart from those that travel with him at this point in time. And, and he's operating more as a solo uh, act, um, if you will. And he's, inter he's preaching in the synagogues, interacting with the Jewish Christians, the, the God worshipers uh, also who are, who are there. But he, has, he encounters this group of intellectual people. And as the scripture says, they spend all of their time gathering together and debating about these gods and uh, the powers of, of these unknown gods. And they recognize that Paul is teaching and preaching something different. And so they, uh, it says that they uh, took him into custody. I'm not sure exactly what that means there. 
uh, whether they invited him or if they said, you come with us. Uh, we we want to talk to you some more about what it is you're preaching here. And so that's the, the setting that Paul is brought into. And they basically say to him, tell us about it. You're preaching about a God um, that we don't know anything about. It's strange to us. Help us to understand. And so Paul begins to talk uh, to them. Um, and some of the things that, that uh, may help you to put, uh, to understand what Paul is doing here is that uh, Paul, in his speech, weaves together the good news about God with the writing of Greek poets, uh, creating an instance of intertextuality. And Paul quotes, quotes two Greek poets, uh, Ephemenides and Artus to reiterate um, what he has stated about God. So this is a case of Paul uh, being all things to all people and using their own culture in order to interact with them. These are intellect Greek, uh, these are intellectual people. They're very um, academically, uh, they, they've studied much. Um, they know all of the um, writings, and Paul uses those writings uh, in order to engage them. And he makes some points uh, out of this. Uh, one is God's availability, that God is equally available and to and can be found by all whom God has created. And then he goes on later on to make the point that God has created all, uh, all of uh, creation uh, comes from God. Uh, all humanity was created by God. Um, and so uh, God is available to everybody by taking that as a logical argument. And then there's uh, God's harmony with man. Uh, Paul's speech highlights the harmony of God with man as God gives everyone life and breath. So there, there's a, not only is God available, but there is a harmony between God and humanity. Um, that we are all God's offspring, because uh, God created us. Uh, and then he goes on, uh, as you know, said about the old preacher, he stopped preaching and went to meddling. Um, he starts to critique their idolatry. Uh, they have all of these gods. And each of these gods have a symbol that's associated with it, uh, a material uh, thing that is worshipped as God. Um, and so Paul uh, condemns that, and he calls f for the audience to repent. I'm not sure how they uh, um, in engage that. It says that, uh, as you read on, that Paul did not have much success in uh, bringing converts out of this group. Uh, so I don't think there was a whole lot of repentance there. Um, quite frankly, uh, and looking at it and thinking about it, I think it just went right over their head. That They didn't have any concept uh, of understanding this. Um, Paul's priorities include preaching to those uh, with a shared heritage, it, it starts out by this passage by telling us that he was going to the synagogues and um, uh, sharing with them, but that he also at other times was going out into the uh, town and engaging anybody that uh, he came in contact with. Um, the, and this is an alien heritage. Um, this Paul's uh, speech is, that's recorded here is directed to this pagan audience of intellectuals. And as I said before, he uses quotes from the Greek poets to build a bridge to them. Um, and, and finally, that Paul's speech highlights that people in Athens live for the here and now uh, and that skeptics are considered the intellectuals. Um, not sure that that uh, 
doesn't stand true also uh, in, in our world today here um, in, in our time in our culture um, had a thought that this has run run out of my brain here maybe I can pull it back up uh, Paul as I said at the beginning is using um, whatever he can to interact with these people wherever he uh, encounters them um, and and he in his writing he talks about being all things to all people and he encourages and invites us to also uh, do the same thing to use whatever means that we we have um, that the uh, thought that ran out of my mind is that uh, too often uh, we the body of Christ uh, the church today hole up in our church the the buildings in our congregations rather than being willing to engage um, and interact uh, with the people that we meet in our uh, everyday travels um, Paul everybody who encountered Paul knew of his relationship with God if they weren't aware of it he told them about it uh, I don't think that we live in that kind of environment today uh, where we wear our relationship with God on our shirt sleeve so to speak but there ought to be uh, I just put this out there for you to consider there ought to be something about our relationship with God that uh, people that we engage with outside of our congregation that they will see that there is something different about our lives uh, and provide an opening for us to tell them what that difference is I remember um, when I worked at Xerox and as I uh, <clears throat> responded to God's call for pastoral ministry and this changed my life uh, there were things that were part of my life before that changed now the man that that I worked for at Xerox he and I butted heads on many many occasions and many times you know looking back on it I sometimes think that you know I wonder why he didn't fire me uh, because sometimes I get right up in his face uh, about the things that I thought were wrong and the things that I thought he was doing was wrong but after I started to pursue the pastoral ministry he knew that something had changed in my life because our relationship changed and one of the things that I regret is I never articulated to him um, what it was that had changed and that's what Paul calls us to do that when God uh, changes our lives that we be able to interact with others to articulate that in whatever words that are needed uh, for, for uh, them to understand our relationship to God one final thought um, we live as a result of Jesus Christ where God is no longer out there someplace but God is up close and personal with us now God never moved away from us it's humanity and the way that we went about worshiping God that kept pushing God uh, pushing ourselves away from God creating this distance rather than acknowledging that God was right here with us and all through the scriptures Old Testament and New uh, you see that 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 God has been there up close and personal and that's one of the points that Paul drives home here well I hope you'll join us in our worship later on today as Pastor Don continues this series of everybody tell somebody and we explore or as she explores in our worship Sunday um, what it means to um, meet people where they are may God's blessings be upon you